Lots of utilities make use of LBR library files to provide extra facilities, such as the ability to run commands from archives or mount them as if they were drives. This video will show some more advanced uses of LBR files and it's a follow-up to our previous video about working with LBR files on CPM. Later versions of the LBR file format definition added support for dates. On CPM, these can be set using setD by Brent B. Powers and then the dates can then be viewed using LDIRB, which I've showed in the previous video. So if I have a look at a particular archive, and we can see here that there are no dates. So if I set those dates using set D, so I'll use uh, 5th of, uh, yes, May 26th, 1985. Now I could either supply an individual member file, or I can do it for the whole org archive. Uh, you noticed here that I'm using American date format. Uh, this is the default. It can be set to European date format by patching it, but uh, as long as you know which one you're using, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. So if I do that, and then I use LDIRB to view the archive, and we can see there we are, 26th of May 1985. I use the year 1985 because SETD isn't year 2000 compliant, uh, nor is LDIRB for that matter. And actually this is mentioned, even though uh, this is 1988. Uh, it is mentioned within one of the files in the archive. If I show that now, and there we are. It mentions there for 1988 that this um, doesn't know what will happen at year 2000. And that's because it's to do with the input and the display. So the input from set D uses two digit dates. So that's a problem straight away. Uh, it's two digit years, sorry, and then LDIRB displays it using two digit years. It's not actually a problem with the LBR file format because that uses dig digital research's Julian date, uh, which actually calculates the number of days from the 31st of December 1977 and then stores it as a 16 bit number. So that should actually be good for dates up to around the year 2157. So uh, plenty of uh, plenty of time on that one. Another interesting thing. At least another interesting mention within the archive. Let me just find it. Yeah. So at the end of the file, there's a mention to the history of it. So I just page through. There we are. Version 2.2, and then it goes on to say version 2 was the original assembly language version, uh, which was recoded from the Turbo Pascal version, which is in turn recoded from the Turbo Modular 2 version, uh, which was a translation of C.B. Faulkner's LSET date. So we've got three different uh, programming languages there used to create this. Turbo Modular 2 particularly interesting because it didn't really exist for very long on CPM and was quickly withdrawn. I mentioned Turbo Modular 2 in an article on the Tech Tinkering website, which you may also be interested in. SETD isn't all that useful nowadays because of its lack of year 2000 compliance, but you might find it useful uh, if you wanted to update a date to reflect the correct date that it would have been at that time. But in any case, I want to show how it, uh, how it worked. A more useful utility is LFIND, which allows us to search through all of the LBR archives that we have on all of the drives and all of the disks uh, and all of the users to search for a particular file or particular files. So if I run it here, uh, L find, say I want to look for all right, uh, .com files, whether they're compressed or not, whether they're compressed or not. I can actually give the Q command, which will try and work out if they're squeezed, but um, but it would miss then, oh, we've got a BDES error on E, and that's just because it's trying to search beyond what uh, what we have. If I, if I don't want to actually just show how to patch it, DDT, right, so if I go into DDT, and then the locations for the drive and the max drive max user are at 157 and 158. So if we alter 157, which is the max drive, and we'll alter that to 4, so that'll be drive D, and then leave that, and then we just save. So where are we? Uh, next is 13, so that would be 12. 12 in decimal is 18. So there we are. Good. So if I try that again, I'll. Uh, this time though, I won't actually put the Q. So I mentioned that if I put the Q like that, then it'll work out if it's squeezed or not, and then it would give uh, .cqm files. But if I put a question mark instead, 
then it also allows us to find things that might be compressed with something other than, uh, like here we are, uh, set D01 LBI, we've got set D.CZM. So uh, that displayed it, uh, even though it was crunched and not squeezed. So LFAN can be a nice little utility, uh, really useful for searching out files. And uh, as I say, just avoid it on CPM plus because it doesn't work quite right. The penultimate command I want to show is LBRDS key by Jim Lopuszynski. It actually allows us to mount a LBR or a number of them as if they were a drive. It uses a set RSX to provide RSX facilities on CPM 2.2 and for this reason it won't work on CPM plus. So if I start beginning by loading set RSX and then we can use LibreDisc, LBR disk. So we call it using LBR disk 23 and then we'll create a drive E colon and then we could specify a single file like that or we can specify a number of them. In this case we'll use all of them, why not? Let's do it properly in for a penny and for a pound. And now if I have a look at the drive and there we are, we've got all the files in all the LBR files contained all on one drive. And then on here uh, we could do simple things like we could look at the particular file. Uh, let's have a look. We'll look at that file that we looked at before. And there we are. That views it just as if it was its own drive. So uh, LBR disk works really well and it's quite a nice program to use. Uh, one slightly careful thing with it is that it's very good for reading. I wouldn't write to it uh, because it can clobber files that follow a file if you're altering an existing one, if you see what I mean. So uh, avoid writing to it, just use it for reading and it works ever so well. The last command I want to show is LRUN by Gary P. Novoselieski the original creator of LU and the uh, creator of the LBR file format. So it allows us to run programs directly from an LBR archive. So this can be really useful because it allows us, well, if you have a lot of small COM files on a disk, as by including them in an LBR archive, you can use the space more effectively. And that's because, uh, say you're storing it in a, a disk that is using 2K blocks. Well, if you had a 3K or a 1K program, you're going to be wasting a K each time it's stored. So if you combine it, combine multiple files like that into a, into a single LBR archive, then it allows you to, uh, to make use of that, uh, to save that space. It can also just be nice to be able to group commands together in LBR archives or purely for convenience. If you've got something in an LBR archive, you don't want to bother an archiving it first. So if I demonstrate how it works, if we have a look at uh, t.lbr, Right, and then in there we've got, okay, we've got lfind. So if I run, and there we are. So it's run lfind from within t. If, uh, if there's any doubt about that, I can actually erase lfind.com here just to prove it. There you are. Uh, so we put dash t in front of the archive that we want to use. And another thing that we can do, it defaults to using command.lbr. So if I have a look at what's in command.lbr, we've got arc and an arc. So if I run arc without anything, no good. And then if I run it with lrun23 in front, and there we are. So we're running it from the command.lbr file. So uh, that's quite a nice little utility. And um, as I say, it can make it quite useful for saving space and for grouping things together. And that's it. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As I say, there's a previous video about working with LBR files, which contains some of the more basic things about creating, looking at uh, LBR files and uh, viewing text files within it and what have you. And I do have a look at some of the other videos on the Tech Tinkering YouTube channel. Please subscribe and also have a look at the Tech Tinkering website.